It's a fundamentally different role. Um, first, of course, the role of the president constitutionally uh, is unique to the president and is not that, that a senior minister or any minister can play, which is to be the second key uh, and to have to vet key appointments in government. That's a role unique to the president. Second, I think, as I mentioned before, you know, ministers, MPs, many others are part of the to and fro of politics. They are in the political fray. The president has to be above the political fray. And that's what I mean when I say the president can play a unifying role. Dear friends, I am Ishwar from Singapore. See, in Singapore, the presidential election is due in September 2023, this year, matter of another few months only. So, the candidate who has proposed to become president is Mr. Dharman Shanmugaratnam, who is a senior member, senior minister. So, he has got a very highly decorated uh, background and is highly respected by all the people. In Singapore, the common man also has to vote for the election has to vote for the presidential election and they have to choose the president. Last time it was Halima Yaakov. Every six years it will be conducted. In 2017 it was Halima Yaakov. That was a walkover because she is a Malay uh, community. For the past so many years there was no Malay president except in the initial when uh, uh, Ishak was there. He was the only Malay president. After that there were no Malay presidents. So last year they reserved this uh, post for the Malay candidate. So Halima Yaakov contested Anna post she was selected. So now it is six years over in September 2023 and uh, she ex uh, actually told that she is not trying for a, a re-election. So she is withdrawing. So now Dharman Shanmugaratnam is in the fray now. There is one more candidate who is a businessman Mr. Go. But it seems now, uh, for businessmen to contest in the president's poll, they need to have a business with a 500 million dollar turnover for the past few years. But in this case, no, he doesn't have a business. He has a business, but that doesn't have a 500 million dollar turnover. It's something much less, 60 million or something only. So whether he will be eligible to uh, contest is still to be seen. And one more candidate is a secondary school teacher who, who is in his 70s. He wants to contest also. But they are actually they are all considered as also rants. So they may not be qualified also to contest. So Mr. Dharman Shanmugaratnam will be, even if there is a contest, it is more likely that he will be elected. Because he is a senior minister. He has been in the People's Action Party, PAP, since the beginning. So for the past 20 years, he has been holding ministerial post, MP from Jurong, uh, Taman Jurong constituency. So he holds a MP post and he is a senior minister and he is an advisor on uh, economic matters to the prime minister. And he was an education minister. He was a finance minister previously. And he was also uh, the coordinating minister for the social uh, welfare schemes. And he was the chairman and he is still the chairman of Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is like a central bank of the country. And also the General Insurance, I mean General Investment Corporation, Government Investment Corporation. He is a chairman on that level some, somewhere. So he is a very highly qualified and highly knowledgeable person in the field of economics, politics, administration, commerce, everything. So that being the case, no? So he is in the good books of almost all including the opposition members and most of the public also and supportively the PAP is his background. So now that he is contesting in the president's election he has to resign the MP seat so which he has done already. So now he has a qualification of uh, basically BSc economics from the London School of uh, Economics and then he did his uh, MPhil in the University of Cambridge. MPhil and then he did a MA public administration in the Harvard University. So these are all his uh, educational qualification plus he is highly knowledgeable, highly talented and he knows in and out of the economics 
and uh, he is an advisor to the government also and he is not involved in any controversy anywhere and there is no corruption charges against him and he doesn't show any favoritism or nepotism to known people he is a straight forward man and is a most patriotic person he looks at what is good for the country only not for this man that man or myself so he looks at what is good for the country and socially also he is very sensitive in the sense no especially during covid time lot of people lost the job and many worked on a lesser salary even though the employer was willing to keep them so suddenly if there is no salary or the salary is cut down by 40% 50% then that person will suffer economically so at this time now mr dharman shanmugaratnam he came into the picture and he advised the government to make payouts to those who are affected by the covid situation and also to give them upgrading training skills upgrading training so that now they will upgrade their skill during this uh, time at least when the situation improves now they can go for a better job and also dharman shanmugaratnam was uh, instrumental in bringing about the skills future scheme skills future scheme provides for skills training for singaporeans so with the changing and advancing technology science and technology day by day people have to be updated so they cannot be lagging behind i studied my uh, become 5 years back no good because times are changing and new things are happening so you have to be updated so you need to be given more training and fresh training so the government subsidizes this they give up, up to 85 to 90% of the training cost the government absorbs so only the person has to pay only 10% or 5% at most so that was a very uh, beautiful scheme and one more thing uh, in appreciation of mr tarman shanmugaratnam usually you see the international forum especially the western countries they make some comments about the asian countries especially if they are doing well they try to you know meddle in their affairs or put some spokes in their uh, work and all those things so in this case also there was one report by a western agency about the cost of living they pointed out singapore cost of living is very high among some 120 countries singapore ranks fifth in the cost of living index so they made an alarming situation that singapore is very costly so people should not go but dharman shanmugaratnam he answered that in a very professional and a very typical way what he said was there are two reasons for this one is singapore dollar has strengthened because the singapore economy is doing well the singapore star dollar has strengthened so those countries which are weak against singapore dollar will definitely uh, feel the you know singapore dollar strength as taxing on them that is one reason second reason he said excellent reason he said all these comparisons they apply only to expatriates expatriate packages see for example if somebody comes from the european country to work in singapore usually they will hire a big condominium and uh, you know they they eat some uh, costly cheese butter bread and all those things and they go to five star hotels and they order four course meal which may cost even 400 dollars for four persons so these are all not the typical singaporean uh, practice because nobody goes for a five star hotel every day so the cost of living if you compare the expatriate spending definitely that is high but singaporeans should not be bothered about that because the singaporean style is different they go to hawker centers food court food stalls everywhere which are all very cheaper and he also pointed out that the a salary rise for singaporeans is more than the inflation rate so that was the typical answer he gave just you you look at this uh, video in singapore for the most expensive city in the world and i know this is uh, uh, floating around and uh, it's attracting a lot of attention but i i don't particularly want to focus on this report in its own right but to to uh, explain a couple of very basic things about the reports that will come out from time to time whether it's EIU or MERSA, which are really aimed at measuring expatriate costs of living in different parts of the world. And they're useful tools for HR managers and corporate HQs as they decide where to place their people. 
so he pointed out very politely and very diplomatically without getting uh, you know agitated all those things you know westerners are uh, throwing accusation nothing like that he simply pointed out the facts and that was an appropriate answer for those who are trying to you know meddle with singapore's uh, ruling and also he is uh, from indian community he is a silon Sil- Sil- silonese tamil actually though he was born in singapore his father and parent i mean grandparents were from silon but he was born in singapore he was raised in singapore and uh, he still has the affinity for the silonese tamil and he usually attends their you know uh, silonese tamil celebratory functions and all so here he attended one function which you see for yourself we sometimes ask ourselves why the silon tamils have been able to have a significant impact in singapore i think the answer was provided in something which miss irene ung mentioned earlier the silon tamils were able to make the most of the advantages of a multiracial environment taking advantage of the opportunities that would normally be preserved for majority in most asian societies at the time taking full advantage of the opportunities that talent and hard work can bring and they also interacted freely with other races from the very start so that was some 100 years uh, celebration of silonese singaporean people so given this background now it is almost a foregone conclusion that mr dharman shanmugaratna will be the next president of singapore so we hope that he will win the election and he will become a president and he will devote his entire life no to the service of the people so we will again meet in some other video regarding singapore thank you